today Kevin and I are really excited because we have a couple of extra goodies to install from Metal Cloak including the front axle disconnect skid and all of this and all of this is the stabilizer relocation bracket which will relocate the stabilizer up out of the way so we're not smashing it on rocks anymore. If you guys remember from our trail damage video from the Rubicon Trail, you'll remember that uh, ours was no longer round. It was more pancake shaped. So I don't know if you guys can see, but this is not supposed to be flat. And believe it or not, we actually had a talk with Metal Cloak in regards to this. And it sounds like they'll be coming out with a relocation bracket for this stabilizer just to get it out of the way so this doesn't happen to other people in the future. So this will prevent that in the future on all the other trails. So we're pretty excited to get this on because again, as I've said before, Kevin and I want to upgrade as things break. That way it's stronger, better, and more capable every time we take it out onto a trail. Woo. Now since I did most of the install when it came to the rear bumper and the relocation bracket, this time around, I'm making Kevin do most of the manual labor. <laughs> I'll help where I'm needed, but for the most part, Kevin is a little bit quicker than I am, obviously, at doing some of this stuff, especially this involves a step bit, a little bit of drilling, etc, etc. So I'll let him have at it, knock it out quicker than I can, and I'll just give commentary. Okay, Kev, what are uh we starting out with? All right, we're gonna remove the steering stabilizer, 18 millimeter, pull this bolt here. There's a flag nut back here, so you wanna push the flag nut forward so that it keeps the bolt from going in. Otherwise, it'll just shove it all the way through and the nut won't hit anything, that flag won't hit anything. This one is underneath and you actually wanna push down on the bolt, on the top of the bolt to get this off of here. And I will show you why in just a second. The top of the bolt is squared so it's keyed on the top so if all you do is push with the drill it'll just shove that up and just spin and won't actually come off all right so then you'll just uh wiggle its way out and there is your stabilizer at this point you can go ahead and probably remove the bracket that held on the stabilizer so that's out of the way all right to get these bolts off we're going to be using a 13 millimeter socket you guys can see exactly why i'm letting kevin do this just getting that bolt loose took a little bit of manpower at least more than my tiny arms could probably muster. You can pull this off whenever you want. You don't have to do it right now. I'm just doing it to get it out of the way. Have to pull it off at all, ever, if not, but. Yeah. Oh, you don't like my six pack? <laughs> I'm trying to be, <laughs> I'm over here trying to make sure that he's like modestly covered. Oh, that's the pot calling the kettle black. Never mind. Yeah. You know what? Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, my so for the record, you guys can actually take this bracket off at any point. Kevin's obviously choosing to take it off now just so it's out of the way completely. We're already under here. We're getting this done, so might as well do it now. Jeep might have missed some welds and missed some paint on, on the frame and welds, but they did use Loctite on, on everything. On, like, everything. Okay, so next up is going to be taking out that track bar bolt because the stabilizer relocation bracket will actually go right there but we're going to show you guys a little trick because we do have to drill at this point and kevin figured out an easier way all right so getting a drill bit in here to drill through this bracket is really not possible we're going to drop this upper rod right here the problem is if you undo this nut it falls down but it hits your tie rod so what we're going to actually have to do is turn the wheels all the way to the passenger side and that'll allow enough clearance to have this drop down. So you wanna do that first before you loosen the track bar because otherwise the whole axle and everything will shift. So let's get the wheels turned, loosen this, and you'll see how everything falls. Actually, I'll loosen this right now. Well, no, yeah. No, that sounds like okay. extra work. We'll turn the wheel first. All right. <laughs> so Brittany's gonna turn the wheel to the right and you'll see, see how it gives room to drop it. Ooh, yeah. We have a straight shot to drill right where we need to drill. We don't know where we need to drill yet, though. We have to mark it. So now it's time to pull the track bar bolt. Okay, you just want to cinch it down so you can 
still move so you can it. still move this bracket because we don't know where exactly is going to be the best place to drill yet. So now we're going to take the bracket that goes on the tie rod. And we're going to install it so that the 45 degree angle right here goes on the driver's side, just like so. You can take your bolts, washer, and a nut. How many nuts? I'm gonna I'm gonna bust four nuts on here. <laughs> your handy dandy seven sixteenths. And hammer away. Well, we're just gonna snug them. <laughs> so hammer lightly away. Just like the bracket on the tie rod side, you want this loose enough that you can maneuver it around. That way we can figure out exactly where we need everything to go. All right, so next up is putting the stabilizer more or less back where it's going to belong once all this is tightened down. Yeah, so we have no idea exactly where we need to drill at the moment, which is why we're kind of mocking up and putting this all together beforehand. The stabilizer needs to extend and contract a certain amount. So you need to not tighten any of this down because you need to fully turn the wheels, extend the stabilizer completely. And that way when you turn the wheels the other way, it'll compress completely. Compress completely. Oh. See what you made me do? <laughs> All right, so what we're doing here is just mocking it up just so we know where to drill that extra hole. All right, so once you've got this side mocked up along with that side, you can take your little punch so you know exactly where you need to drill. And then you take it all back off again. stabilizer bar on there and tighten it all down. Oh man, sun is setting super fast now, but now we can actually put the stabilizer bar on there, tighten everything down, we're done with that, and then it's just the skid plate left. So next up is a, I wouldn't say necessarily difficult, but kind of a technical part, and that's bolting down or tightening down the bracket that's on the tie rod. But the trick is not tightening it down, it's figuring out where along the tie rod to tighten it down at. So Kevin's gonna do as good of a job as he can to explain how we're gonna do this. All right, so you wanna have this bracket all loose. Everything else is bolted up on the axle side. You're gonna get in and turn the wheels all the way driver. That'll be your full extended length of your stabilizer. So now you're gonna take your stabilizer and come all the way out so it's fully extended. Now what you wanna do is you wanna bring it back about a quarter of an inch or so because with the vehicle off, you're not gonna truly be able to go full lock. It always brings it back some. Bring it back about a quarter of an inch. That'll get you back within range. And now you wanna actually come back in about another quarter of an inch. So from all the way full, I'd say about a total half inch. Once you have it there, make sure you position it back just a little bit so it never interferes with your rod up here. And you can go ahead and tighten that down. Once you do that, you'll go ahead and turn all the way passenger and make sure you're not bottoming out. The best thing to do from the beginning is to actually compress this all the way down, mark where bottom is at, and then fully extend it. Now we'll go ahead and cinch it down. Make sure you tighten these U-bolts down equally so you have just as much thread as on one side as you do on the other. Now once you've got all four of those nuts tightened down and you've got that bracket situated where it needs to be on the tie rod, that's it. You're good to go, which means we get to put on the front axle disconnect skid. Lucky for us, this is super easy. You just gotta remove the bolts from the existing skid and then slap on the metal cloak one. All right, so you got a bolt here, a bolt here, a bolt on this side and then a bolt up on this other side. So there is your OEM skid. And here is the metal cloak skid. So you can obviously see the difference in thickness. And if this bad boy holds up like the underbelly skids do, it'll be a massive improvement. And as you can see, rather than having bolts on this side, over here, like the OEM skid did, these are up here. And these two guys actually use the OEM bolts for the original stabilizer bracket. Super, super, super easy. Just a few bolts and much, much more protection. 
And just like that, we have the stabilizer shock relocated upwards and out of the way, which gives us way more room for activities underneath the Jeep as far as clearance goes. And we have beefier protection for the front axle disconnect. Thank you again to Metal Cloak and their products. You guys are amazing. And of course, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to ask us in the comments below. But as usual, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And we will see you next time. So now we're gonna take, don't look so, so. So now we're gonna take the bracket that goes on the tie rod. Oh God. Might as well do it now. I heard that. Jesus, Kev. <laughs>